Hey folks, this week I'm going to cover module 2.1, the Star Wars, and also the notes for Star Wars. So the Star Wars, where it all began, the is important here, okay? So Star Wars didn't just come out of nowhere, even though it kind of seemed like it did back in 1977. From my perspective, it did, and I was like a little kid back then. So it had a long, painful birthing process, which actually began way back in 1971, when disheartened by the depressing actual sci-fi movie he just made, THX 1138, George Lucas floated the idea of writing a fun sci-fi film and trademarked the title The Star Wars. Previously, he'd considered adapting Flash Gordon, but it was already in development elsewhere. So he started typing and typing and typing. Uh, and this is footnoted, and all my footnotes are from How Star Wars Conquered the Universe, um, which is your textbook, okay? So he came up with this, which is the Star Wars treatment. Read this, or at least glance over it. It's radically different from the Star Wars movie that you know. So you can actually see where he was in 1973, um, before he really started rolling on the script. Um, and then you also might see some more of the um, similarities between the Star Wars and uh, Hidden Fortress as well. And um, a year later, he came up with, uh, with this. So here is a, an actual copy of the rough script uh, from 1974. So take a look at that as well. That has some more similarities, but it's still really, really different from the final movie. So you might notice even after a short skim that this is very much not the script of the Star Wars that we know and love. So although George Lucas is considered to be a visionary, he was never a natural writer, so he struggled a lot. He struggled so much that between drafts one and three that many credit r artist Ralph McQuarrie, um, who's famously attached to the Star Wars franchise, um, whom he hired to flesh out his vision for budgeting purposes um, with the films actually getting made. So it was really this artwork by Ralph McQuarrie that really gave an idea to the people with the money. This is what this movie is going to look like. This is what you should get excited about. So the studio heads no longer had to read one of Lucas's incomprehensible scripts in order to understand what Star Wars was meant to look like. But by the time these images and the third draft of the script started circulating, the production team uncovered a really big problem. They had an unprecedented number of special effect shots to complete on a budget that was low even by 1970 standards. So famously, the special effects team, which was dubbed Industrial Light and Magic, and then they also had to invent their own equipment to complete many of the shots. They were so behind uh, that early screening cuts had to be completed with footage of old war films subbing for all of the space dogfight footage. And which old war films were they? In many cases, they just stole footage directly from the Dam Busters because that was uh, the movie that they were really taking a lot of this from. So a draft and a half later, um, after cutting down the number of effect shots, um, some script doctoring by people who could write dialogue, and then a semi-disastrous and disconnected shoot in Tunisia and in England, a horrible car accident involving Mark Hamill and his face, a total freakout by Brian De Palma, who after reading the first title crawl, he's like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever read in my entire life, and a complete re-editing of the film by Marsha Lucas and two other guys who got Oscars uh, for it, and voila, a uh, blockbuster for the ages was born. But if you read your text, which you should, um, you'll realize I drastically oversimplified a lot of this, um, so make sure you read your text, okay? So your notes for the actual film, Star Wars, we have lost the the by this point, okay? And you have all the various posters from the various releases of the film as well. I like digging those up. So it was directed by George Lucas and written by George Lucas with contributions by George and Gloria Hike, um, who helped him with dialogue because they knew how to write dialogue and George Lucas never did. Not one of his strengths, but he knew that. Okay, we all know this. Um, the budget was 11 million. Originally it was 8.25 million, but then it kind of ran over budget, especially with a lot of the special effects and some of the disasters they had in Tunisia when they were shooting. And then box office was 775 million, um, 550 in its first run, and then they had several runs after that. I don't know if that's adjusted. Um, you're going to find that when you look at box office, they're going to say actual box office and adjusted box office for inflation, and it's really hard to tell. So I try to match up 
the actual budget with the actual box office. So hopefully this is right. And that's what I'm trying to do with all these things. If I'm wrong, well, let me know. Okay. So some notable, notable contributions of this film, the sound design. Um, this is one of the first films to use Dolby surround sound. It wasn't the first, but it was one of the first, which allowed them to really have a soundtrack that was all around you. Okay. Um, special effects, as I mentioned before, uh, motion control for spaceships, so computer-controlled cameras that could shoot the same movement, multiple passes, uh, moving mats, rotoscoping for the lightsabers. I mean, this thing is full of special effects. They're really what kind of hold the film together in a lot of ways. And then merchandising, too. Toys, linens. Everybody had Star Wars sheets when I was a kid. They're always scratchy, though. I wish they could have been a little softer. Uh, fast food tie-ins, you know, you got the... They didn't have Happy Meals yet, but, you know, the you get the Star Wars glasses and all that stuff. Everybody was getting it, you know, the toys. Um, books, comics, etc. All kinds of stuff. Merchandising. This is where people realized how much money could be made tying into a film. So it was never meant to be the enormous blockbuster that it became. And it succeeded despite being a pastiche of genres and styles barely held together by a good soundtrack and strangely earnest performances by actors who were not quite feeling the script or getting a whole lot of direction. In 1977, this is what America and the rest of the world needed. This is what the children of America needed when they were five years old growing up in 1977. It's whatever. The 70s are rough, okay? And this was the year for this film to come out. It just it had to. Um... It was released multiple times uh, in the late 70s and early 80s, almost on a yearly basis. Uh, VHS didn't exist yet. If you don't know what VHS yet, it was what we had before DVDs. If you don't know what DVDs are, DVDs are what we had before we had Amazon Prime and Netflix. Um, it was released multiple times in order to capitalize on its enduring legacy because people still wanted to see it and also to pump folks up for sequels. So, you know, before The Empire Strikes Back came out in 1980, Star Wars was released again in order to get people excited about it. So after 1997 special edition, uh, which had lots of new but not necessarily good digital effects, the original version was put on ice and it can only be found on the bonus disc of like the 2004 version of the DVD. Um, and it's like a telecine of the original laser disc. Um, and it doesn't look the best, but it's like, but Han shoots first. That's the most important thing. And this isn't the original version, the one I'm providing you. Um, it is like the second version because you can tell the first version did not say episode four, episode four, New Hope. That was added like in 1979 or something like that. So this is like that 1979 version. So synopsis, two droids escape an attack by the evil empire and enlist the services of an ancient warrior and his acolyte to rescue a princess and deliver the plans of a super secret battle station to the galactic rebellion or a young man on a desert planet with little opportunity follows two recently purchased droids across the galaxy on an adventure that is at times heartbreaking and triumphant or a wise and desert hobo looking for redemption convinces two droids and a farm kid to join the rebellion against the evil empire by rescuing a princess from a super secret space station guarded by his former acolyte nemesis or a roguish star pilot and his hairy sidekick give passage to a wise and desert warrior hobo two droids and a farm kid unknowingly pitting them against the evil empire that is intent on subjugating the universe and destroying a burgeoning rebellion or a dark-hearted space samurai utilizes all of his resources to stop a plucky princess, two droids, a dusty hermit, a mysterious farm kid, a roguish pilot, and his hairy sidekick from destroying his newly operational space station by exploiting a flaw in its sewage system. It all depends on perspective, I guess. <laughs>